Hey guys, welcome back to According To. I'm Megan. And I'm Sierra. This week's episode, I think it's going to be a fun one because Megan and I are going to be discussing kind of like the nine to five versus social media influencer battle. We're not going to more more so like traditional job versus a non-traditional career like social media and content creation. So uh, this isn't really going to be like an actual battle per se. We're mostly just like, I think it's an interesting topic to discuss. And so... We've got a lot of people that we're going to talk about and like influencers that we personally follow and like how they've navigated different changes in their career and like any fallout or backlash that they may have yeah. had. Because <clears throat> like just to give like a little preview before I do like our little highlights and catching up like we always do, we have kind of a category of like people who do both, people who started maybe in a more traditional job but then have since left and are now doing more social media full time. And then we also have like people who kind of went the reverse route of was more content creation social media focused and then have kind of transitioned into what is actually realistically more of a traditional job so yeah should be fun so before we get into the bulk of the episode we are going to be we are going to be talking about our weekly spotlight and i don't know about you but my weekly spotlight is the fact that we finished up our second clinical rotation today that was my weekly spotlight as well um it's friday when we're recording this because we're trying to get a little bit of ahead um and I didn't think I was going to be getting done early today but then um the two patients that I was going to be seeing after lunch things ended up happening where they ended up canceling so then it was lunchtime I didn't fully know if I was like going to be staying or not um but eventually my CI was like I guess you could leave if you want (laughs) that's like (laughs) so I was like okay I mean I will take you up on that which I feel like I past me would have been kind of like maybe I maybe I don't do that but I've started to just like I will be a little more selfish with my time, especially if it's, like, being offered to me. Um, And, like, a lot of stuff that I've seen of, like, medical students is, like, if you're given the opportunity to, like, go home, like, go home. (laughs) So I took that to heart and I did that today. Mm -hmm. So um, my Fridays are always half days. And so I had four patients initially scheduled. But it seems like you were more caught up on documentation than you were thinking you would be. Yeah. So um, we have for this pediatric location that I was at, it's kind of unique in the sense that they only ever have one evaluation that they do a week, which is like very different because a lot of other settings you're doing either multiple evals a day or like throughout the week. And so that was kind of nice just because evals are like more of a time consuming thing to do. That being said, the documentation for what I've experienced for the pediatric evals, it is hefty documentation. Like there's a lot to do and it's just a lot of like writing. It's a lot of writing what you observe, which is tough initially because, like, you have to, like, have good observation skills in all areas of PT, but, like, just when it's solely what you're relying on, like, not really measurements or anything, like, it's just how they do things, how well they do them, like, that's how you're judging their strength and stuff. You have to, like, really try, like, try and mentally keep track, so the notes just took a long time, and so the first two evals that I wrote up, we did the eval on Wednesday, and then they didn't get done until monday or tuesday of the next week and like and then you obviously have the next one tomorrow yeah exactly and then obviously like there's other documentation and like patients that i'm seeing that like takes my time so it's like i'm limited in that sense but i will say from what i could tell like sierra really took on a lot of the caseload which i correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think you were fully expecting that going into it i didn't know what to expect so by and i also like i don't want to make it sound like i was like you know i was leading like leading and like my CI could have like gone off to another room and like it's tricky from what I found like trying to judge my level of independence there were certainly a lot of patients that like she could like be doing her computer work and like I was the one seeing them and like that was that but then some of the kids that were either like more difficult due to behaviors or just like required like just more people to like keep them on track like my CI would be there to like help like with play and stuff and like she'd assist so it's like hard to tell like you know I was leading, but, like, we're both there, mm-hmm. so whatever. But, yeah, by the end, I was seeing all the patients, like, this past week. She was like, okay, hey, you're you're going to lead them all. So I was like, okay. Anyway, but then for the last eval, getting back to what I was saying, the last eval was this Wednesday, and then I got the write-up all done yesterday. Granted, it was a younger kid, and so, like, the younger they are, the less skills they are to check. But, like, the write-up still took, like, a while, but... She was impressed. She was like, wow, that's impressive that you did that on one day. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> You're like, well, I didn't want to stay, wanna stay too late. <laughs> yeah. on Friday. Because well, she was so. saying, like, you know, if we need to, like, stay a little bit later on Friday, we can. <laughs> and I was like, 
no <laughs> we aren't doing that we won't need to be doing that actually so how'd your uh, final review go um mine went well um so for our school and i'm sure you know any other school that has clinical internships something similar i'm sure takes place but we do a midterm review which was at like our four and a half week mark and then um a final review they're the exact same thing but it's just to like check to see how things are going and what um you need to improve on and so um mine was today just like yours was and it went well i mean <clears throat> we kind of pointed out the same things and i was at you always want to be at the level there's a thing at the end of the form that's like are they at the level of like a new grad and so hopefully they put you in that area and they're like is there any areas of current concern yeah, and you it's like no. a slider of like zero to ten <clears throat> and five is like at it's supposed to be at and they stress this entry level expected position for like that setting. that setting and so where i was at um which is outpatient full time is like they see 12 patients but like their expected caseload for a new grad is eight patients um which i was going to see eight patients on wednesday originally like at the start of this week but then due to cancellations and other stuff like that dwindled down to like i saw six so i think that most i saw like was seven at one point during my clinical because it just never fully got up to like that eight in one day but just because i was one patient <laughs> short they were not he was not going to just like, yeah no uh i was very pleased i was like uh my ci put me at a seven out of ten i was like thank you girly i'm flattered especially like i know i've mentioned this but like peds is not you know my dream career she also like at the end I don't know if I just, like, got better throughout. I mean, I know I got better, like, interacting with the kids and stuff. But she was, like, and you seem, like, you know, like, a relative, like, you're relatively natural, like, in this setting. And I was, like, really? You're, like, I don't know about that, but thank you. And then she also complimented, she was, like, you know, you have, like, good handling skills, like, trying to get the kids to, like, do what you wanted them to do without, like, actually doing them, doing it for them. Like, getting the kids to, like, roll and stuff. Because, like, at first when I was, like, watching her, like, the first day, I distinctly, recovery. I distinctly remember um watching her trying to get this kid to roll and i was like how is like how are you just like not doing it for him like how are you getting him to roll he like you're not communicating with him like you are but like he's not like going to understand exactly like oh bring your arm over here and like blah blah, blah. i was like how am i like supposed to get this kid to roll and then by the end i was like yeah so just you know we're gonna bring this arm <laughs> you know it's facilitating some rolling so yeah and then also like it was just interesting because i have not had like a ton of interactions with like really young kids like i was a gymnastics coach and the youngest I probably saw was, I don't know, five years old or something. I'm not, like, I was spotting them and stuff, but I wasn't, like, physically moving them around or anything. And so my baby and, like, small little child handling skills was, like, zero before this. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'd be, like, picking up kids now and, like, moving them around and, like, facilitating, like, them sitting down. And I was like, look at me go. Yeah. You made some good improvements. Um... What else to catch you guys up on? So, we're going to Cincinnati tomorrow, which is exciting. We'll actually I have, have yet like to finished, pack. We'll have finished our trip by the time this actually goes up. We're recording Aww. this in advance so that we have an episode to go up, and we don't obviously record in Cincinnati. So, um, we're gonna go visit Maggie. Our mom's coming with. Um, I'm not sure fully exactly like her schedule, and I just texted her today to like figure that out, and she doesn't even fully know. Um, I know that she's not working on Sunday and then she kind of didn't know otherwise so it's gonna be like visiting her but I guess maybe also, also just, just like us taking a trip exploring Cincinnati um on her own so um should be fun because we haven't seen her since July when she moved because the one time that she came back Sierra and I had COVID so yeah we were unable to see her then but I'm very excited um and I haven't been, been to been Ohio there. before yeah so, new state. And we're flying, which last time we, I guess we went to Florida for spring break, and then um, we went to San Antonio in February, so that was still technically travel. But it's kind of, it's yeah. been a, a little bit of a slower year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, it should be fine. And, like, the weather is going to be nice, like, sunny for the most part, I think, in, like, 60s, 70s, which is, like, for fall, cannot I'll complain. Take it. I did wish when you we were first wanting to go visit Maggie, I was hoping we could like make it work where we'd be able to go to like a Bengals game and she would have to be working, but I would be able to like just go enjoy no. the game. Um, 
but just with how our schedules worked out and whatnot uh they just played yesterday thursday night football on amazon prime and, and then they're not play playing until, until next sunday, sunday so. so it's fine um there will be games in the future <laughs> i hope so um i guess i don't know maybe she won't work for them next year and then like when am i gonna go to a game this year but who knows <laughs> um anyways anything else to catch you guys up on i mean we'll be starting um our transition into me having to yeah. live in cedar rapids for the majority of like the following nine weeks i do anticipate that i'll be coming home for a lot of the weekends like except maybe if there's like an iowa game mm-hmm. maybe not but yeah i feel like you'd probably just be a little more comfortable here for the weekends and just like we'd be able to podcast you know yeah <laughs> and things like that because sometimes when we did our separate podcasts for our six-week clinical summer of 2021 it was doable it wasn't like horrendous but it's a little bit harder well the wi-fi when the wi-fi would go out it was like what did you say and yeah, then we have to like, not make things just trickier and i don't know like we record with um these zoom h4n whatever they're called and so we bought a second one but i swear something seems off about it so we don't like using it if we don't have to but it does technically work but there would just be like is that when we were dealing with like weird static stuff i don't or, remember honestly i block it out um i think that's all we have to like catch you guys up on chat about we still this walls remains empty for now yeah but we just haven't been inspired to put something there yet. <laughs> um, anyways, so I think originally when they had this idea, Megan had the idea to talk about, like, should people go into influencing? And then I feel like we we're kind of dipping our toes back into the episode that we did a few months ago relating to how you guys could start your own brands on social media. And so we wanted to, like, make sure it was different. And <clears throat> one thing that I wanted to include was I'm going to, like, butcher this um tiktokers name michaela this has been a recent thing nogira is that how you would say that nogira yeah she's like the makeup influencer with a thick thick boston accent right she's from boston Mm -hmm. um anyway she sits at least so she posted a tiktok clip that has since been deleted and i looked up the full video for context you guys could do the same if you want to but essentially a lot of people were having, like, responding to that TikTok. This one has, like, 13 million followers. Like, I know. It's insane. Wow. Um, but essentially, she was responding to a comment, and the comment stated, poor you, report to a job 9 to 5, lol. And then she, like, responds to the comment and says, the part that, like, was clipped that, like, most people were seeing was just, it's 519, I just Sierra's got off like, of work. Sierra's, like, copy her accent now. <laughs> it's not nearly as thick. She's like, it's 519, I just got off of work. <laughs> something try being uh, try being influencer for a day like that's the part that was clipped and then everyone was wow everyone was responding to getting mad about but i believe in context so i looked up the full clip and i am paraphrasing but essentially in response to that comment she was like i got up at 6 a.m today i spent hours recording content and then editing it then i have meetings um and i like manage all my other social media it now it's 5 19 and i just got off of work try being try being an influencer for a day and then i'm paraphrasing at the end too but she's like it's not for everyone in fact it's not for most people was what she said so i do think that with the full context she's not just like she is saying it's a hard job but she's also providing like i was wanting your opinion do you think it's more like she's commenting on the length of time it takes for her to do all her work or the difficulty i mean i don't know that i've even seen like the entire clip but if she was mentioning like starting at 6 a.m in my mind it probably is talking about like she did spend like a good chunk of time but then like also in response to the nine to five specifically it was like okay well it started sooner it's just now 5 19 and i'm just getting done that's how i take it so she's saying like i had a lot that i had to do today it took a lot of my day you try doing that Mm -hmm. i do think like with the full context, I don't think she's being, like, as bad as people are, you know, making her out to be. But just, like, the last comments where it's, like, the try being an influencer for a day is when it's, like, well, what else does that mean? And if you you're can not saying- easily... There's different varieties of influencers where it's, like, 
some people, and maybe she's included, where it's like more of a structured job than people probably realize, and there's X, Y, Z that you have to get done. And then there's people where I feel like it's more chill and it really like you've got a lot of freedom with what you do in your day yes you have to get like i feel like that's like one, the two, lifestyle done the yeah. lifestyle youtubers and tiktokers like i imagine just because like we kind of are in that lifestyle realm it's like pretty chill you know it is for us anyway because like you're not like creating content you're you are but it's usually based off of like your life and what you're doing and you usually get to do things you have to do anyways so it makes yeah. it a little bit easier and less time consuming yeah so but a lot of people obviously in response to the, that audio they're, they're using that audio the clip that was like yeah. now it's like not even on her account it's like a screen recorded clip that was taken and now people are like responding that or duetting that one and they're just making fun of it <clears throat> with their normal traditional jobs yeah so i've also seen i think this was i don't remember like the tiktoker who posted this but it was something that i saw of um someone mentioning like in in relation to like nine to five corporate content and people who are like social media people they were saying like once your social media career like passes like that salary passes what you're making your corporate job like you're gonna quit and so obviously most people like were agreeing. But then I saw Anna Hyde, who's someone that we're going to talk about a little bit later too. She was saying how she like disagreed with that sentiment. And she said like she was more talking about like fulfillment in terms of career. And I feel like that's something that we can kind of carry into. I think that's what brings people into like that last category we're talking about. Like who end up saying like just doing social media isn't fulfilling me mm-hmm. or like that's not all I want to do. Yeah. So I feel like this is definitely a conversation that is being had, certainly on TikTok. I think that, I mean, TikTok is where like all people are talking about anything these days. So Um, anything else to add before we get into the first category of influencers? Let's dive in. All right. So first category are the influencers who do both social media and they work like a nine to five or just like a traditional job. And so the two that I personally know and, like, I don't really, like, watch or follow them regularly, but, like, I kind of keep up with stuff, Anna Hyde, who we just mentioned, and then Lexi Fuller. So, Anna Hyde is a recent new grad nurse, but she was, like, she had a social media she following. mostly, like, she grew her following through cheer and kind of, like, being a college influencer, and obviously then once she graduated from nursing school, she moved to New York City and became a peds nurse there and so that in itself is like i think a lot of times like nurses can usually grow like a decent following on social media because like there's so many of them and other people who like want to go that route can use them for inspiration Mm -hmm. so not only did she already have a following but then she went into a field where there's a lot of people who are also in that field and so she's kind of meshed her content because when she was like prior to her being a new grad nurse like she i don't really watch that much I'm sure she vlogged about, like, being a college student and stuff, but, like, her brand was herself, and, like, now she's incorporated her career as a nurse into her brand, and I think it's only helping her. Right? No. She's doing really well, because it gives you more content to make. She's still fitting it in. Not that it's, like, easy, but she's still fitting it in with her, like, regular responsibilities with having work. Being a nurse that she's, like, working 312s, like, it gives her those other four days of the week to then spend time editing vlogs, editing videos for TikTok, working on brand deals outside of that stuff. And so she's still working a full-time job, but then has, it's not like, it's harder to do that when you're doing a nine to five, I think, when you're coming home after like a long day and then you have like that shorter like evening the weird time, chunk of to time just like try and get stuff done versus like she's got days at a time to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Honestly, she's like one person on this list who I'm like, girly, If you wanted to, like, work as a part-time nurse, like, I think you should. She seems kind of burnt out, which is, like, the downside of doing both. Yeah, I would agree. Because, I mean, the girl seems like she has no sleep. Yeah. She's a night shift nurse, too. And so, I just wonder how she does it all. And then you see other, like, I've seen other nurses post TikToks, like, multiple, who are just, like, I don't understand how Anna Hyde, like, 
does this and is also like a content creator on top of being oh you've a seen nurse. people talk about that yes oh i haven't seen that i believe it though because like i feel like she's just posting all the time about how she's like so tired and exhausted and i'm like girly and i know she's mentioned like she earns more from influencing than nursing and but she still wants to be a nurse so i'm like girly work part-time like yeah. you can still keep your nursing content while like maintaining good work-life balance i think what's hard is like she just graduated and so like as a new grad it's kind of that time you're expected to like capitalize yeah. on gaining experience like no one wants to hire a new grad especially like and part-time like mm-hmm. i feel like you need to like earn that later so i would not be surprised if she like you know any time now i would say but she like again just started her job not that long ago but i would not be surprised like if she started doing part-time because she's doing a lot mm-hmm. and then lexi fuller she is she just graduated from dental school she has a podcast as well you guys might know her sister gabby fuller was like she is or was i don't know if she retired or not she still is cheering um but she is a world champion cheerleader and she also does social media and stuff full-time but her sister uh lexi just graduated from dental school and is currently um i think a pediatric resident are they still called residents yeah um and then also doing like a youtube channel i don't know if she like does tiktok or anything as well but she's like capitalizing on trying to make a social media career. I don't know how much income she earns from that social media career because it's not quite as well established as like her sister, for example. Mm-hmm. But it's certainly, I think, established enough. Yeah. And she's definitely like consistent and it's definitely like a main part of her life. She puts a lot of time into doing stuff. So um, and she's even mentioned just like in vlogs and stuff that for her, um, I mean, I think she's really confident about going into the dental field. But for her, like, she's mentioned that she's never wanted to, like, rely on social media as a job and, like, having to make sure that your meeting ends meet that way. Um, And it's more so just a way to have extra income and, like, just have fun with posting different things and being a little bit more creative on top of doing your actual job. So that's where she's kind of coming or, like, meshing the two together, Mm -hmm. I guess. Kind of like that bonus of, like, I have my job and it's going to be a well-paying job because she's going to be a dentist. But then it's like, you know, like, and what else can you do? usually, like, can work pretty decent hours. Like, yeah, like, once you're established. Especially the more established you are. So, that's good, too. And um, then I couldn't think, and you can, like, let me know if you have thought of anyone else. I couldn't really think of anyone that I personally follow or know of, really, that's also, like, a full-time, like, they work at a corporate job or, like, work at 9 to 5. Other than, like, there's random, like, healthcare people that I'll see. Everyone's more like, Dr. Mike is still a doctor. I don't know, what to, like, what capacity, but I know he still works um and then just like other tiktok like lawyer people that i'll see or healthcare people that i cannot think of any of their names right now but in but that sense them. i think it's different for them compared to us talking about anna hyde or lexi fuller because those people one like got their nine to five first and then started their nine to five usually like related to the healthcare healthcare why did i say like that the healthcare field that they're in or like if they're a lawyer they'll talk about like law stuff like in that sense, their brand is based on their professional identity. And so, like, if they quit their 9 to 5, that wouldn't, like, they couldn't keep yeah. creating content. I have seen, like, I don't remember this nurse's name, but it's, like, I want to say it was, like, it's a nurse on TikTok who has, like, a pretty big following. And her husband or boyfriend is, like, in medical school. and Oh, I think I know who you're talking about. She, like, has, like, her nursing she content like a million on social followers, media. Right? Like, yeah. It's crazy. And so I don't think she works part time or I think don't think she works full time anymore, but it's kind of crazy. She made like a TikTok kind of like joking or just mentioned that like she from her social media content stuff is like going to be making more than like her husband's like ever going to make probably Wow. um, as like a doctor. And it's just crazy. I think she still like works as a nurse because like it is kind of, you know, her content, her brand. But you definitely are afforded the opportunity to, like, take a step back a little bit if you're doing so well with social media, you know, but you also kind of, like, you don't want to fully let go of, like, I'm not a nurse anymore because that's what Mm -hmm. I gained to follow doing, so. And then Meg and I also took the liberties of placing ourselves in this category. It would obviously, like, be, you know, in the future because we don't have jobs yet. Yeah. But we are finishing up PT school both going to be looking for nine to five type of jobs and so 
and we're obviously going to continue planning to podcast youtube i would love to get more into tiktok one thing that i am looking forward to and we've already mentioned this with lexi fuller specifically is like i mean we're already like not really relying on like the monetary stuff that we get from social media like even just knowing that we have like jobs in the future yeah but like once i'm getting that paycheck i can like fully just say whatever happens happens like just have fun with it Mm -hmm. and so i'm looking forward to that i think that you and i both are like itching to find like that creative freedom when it comes to like i love watching anna heights tiktoks for like her day in life nurse stuff i would love to make that for like pt or something it inspired me to do even one on my clinical rotation so i think it is always fun just to like i used to be very i didn't know what to do with like my own personal tiktok or like how i wanted to grow that at all so i've been very like stagnant and like not posting on there and then recently i've been more inspired by people like anna or just other people who have different careers to like incorporate the two a little bit more um because i do think that they can mesh well together and there's an audience for that because a lot of people work traditional jobs Mm -hmm. they want to see people like them yeah but then you know to see them those people have to be content creators on top of what they already do yeah um and then kind of like the thing with me is like we've obviously been doing social media stuff for a long time so it is kind of like habit at this point and if we didn't do anything I would feel kind of like what am I doing like I I can't just imagine coming home having literally no social media stuff at all to worry about or think about um because I haven't had to do that in a very long time or ever um but the idea of work, like I feel like people are meant to work like 40 hour work weeks and that sounds pretentious because a lot of people need to to make ends meet I keep leaning more and more towards like a 32 hour work week because I've actually seen like a good number of PTs like who do that and it just seems like their hours those eight fewer hours afford them like so much more opportunity like family wise or hobby wise where I just think it's worth it to do that if you can and then obviously like any supplement we get from social media just helps that. So then talking about these influencers that maintain nine to five jobs and like how we are planning on doing the same thing. I think the big question is like, why would you choose to do that? And for me, like I can't explain why, but obviously like we kind of knew, like we were very fortunate, like at a young age to make a good, like decent living on social media, like more than we could have ever imagined. But like never once was I thinking like, oh, like this is my future. Like Like, I was always doing for the rest of my life. And like that's going to fulfill me. I was always someone who was like, well, I'm going to finish high school. I'm going to like I'm good at school. I'm going to go to college and like get a job. Like I just never once considered social media as like my future career. And like I've kept up with it. And like, yeah, I've been making money from it, but it's not like my calling. And I think that's ultimately where I personally land is that like I don't feel like called to do social media. Like I don't feel like my purpose is like within what we're doing here. Yeah. I feel like I, I mean, I agree with Sierra in terms of like growing up again. I was always, I was never thinking like social media is what I'm doing full time. It was always kind of like, okay, let me think about what I want to do when I'm growing up and getting older. And part of that too is like, no one really expects social media to be a job, especially like back when we were in high school and stuff. But I also feel like I can think back to it, but I maybe don't even fully appreciate it now like I remember how mentally draining I mean it always can be a little bit um but especially like in high school and early college when you uh, see like the views and stuff going down it really is hard on you mentally and like creativity I mean there are some people who are like creative to no end or I don't know I meant like I mean there are people who are very creative (laughs) and like that never seems like it runs out yeah and they can keep going and keep going And I consider myself a fairly creative person, but sometimes you, like, hit a wall. And you, like, cannot get out of the hole you're in, and you're just like, I just need to think of different things that are interesting that people want to see or how I can change things up to turn things around. And if you physically, like, if you just can't think of the things to make that happen, you feel so stuck and then in the case where it's like if this was the only thing we were doing like that is your livelihood that's you know 
what you're depending on. That's what in the future your family is partially depending on. And so the thought of being able to eliminate that stress a little bit by having a more stable job that I could, you know, it's not related to social media at all. It's related to me just trying and going to help people. It's still a career where I'm not taking it home at the end of the day. So it's a very like separate thing as well. I was like, that seems like a good thing Mm -hmm. for me. And I also think that truly like why I think a lot of this is like, I've seen it mostly related to healthcare and stuff, but like, I think why this wouldn't work for like people maintaining a corporate job while becoming a social media influencer is because why would you work a corporate job? Yeah. In the sense that usually you're just like a cog in the machine of like crunching numbers, like sending out emails. Like that's not in my mind quite as fulfilling as potentially like a career in healthcare. It's harder, not necessarily harder, but like mentally, I feel like it can be a little bit more draining or exhausting also, like, if you're or physically demanding. In a corporate job, opportunities for part time or different shift work is not going to be as prevalent so therefore that in itself makes it but you have to to juggle both yeah so that's also where i think it's kind of like if you just like are like some random like bank teller and like you blow up on social media like why would you keep being like a bank teller yeah you know versus like for physical therapy for us specifically i'm like oh you know what i just thought of that we don't have on this list who um this fits in a different category but the ice cream guy Oh, I but, don't really see his stuff that often, so I... I don't either, but I just... wasn't even on my he radar. He just came to my mind. He opened he up quit? his own ice cream oh. shop in New York City. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's kind of why I feel like why people do both and why it would maybe make sense for people to not do both. Speaking of, that brings us to our next category. Let's talk about influencers who previously worked a nine-to-five and then they quit to pursue social media full-time. Um, if you know us, then you probably have maybe at least heard of these people in passing. And there's definitely like way more. I don't know why I like blanked when you were writing stuff out, but the one who comes to mind who I still personally like follow and watch is Brooke Michio. She graduated from UGA in 2018, I think. And then she worked up in Boston doing, I think like cold calling and stuff. I don't know where she worked, but it might've been 2019. Mm, yeah, you might be right. And then uh, she quit after like six months or something on the job, I think, to pursue social media full time. And then Michelle Reed, she's never been someone that I've followed. I don't even know if it was six months. That's besides the point, though. Okay. Uh, Michelle Reed, never really followed her that much. I just know that she worked a corporate job in New York City and then quit to pursue social media full time. Katie Bilotti, same thing. I don't really follow her that much either. I just know that she worked a corporate job and then quit. So. I think that something that these girls do all have a common is that they worked corporate jobs and so and like entry level corporate jobs. Yeah. So for them, if social media was like taking off or like was already there, I can only imagine that they're like, I'm making more. Probably. I can only assume. And with you can kind of assume, but maybe not fully say like these. It's not like these people necessarily hated their jobs, but if you go back to Sierra's analogy of like in these types of corporate positions, you're probably just like one person and a whole line of a lot of people that like are not probably super necessary for the company um and you i wouldn't be surprised if you individually don't feel like fully appreciated for the time that you're putting in and for what you're getting out of it so then there's only more draw to say i'm doing maybe they're not even like maybe they just feel like they're making more with the time they're putting in to the social media so then if they leave their job and have more time they can grow that in a way where they will be doing better had they compared to had they stayed at that job yeah and like honestly that just like makes sense like because one they're i mean like brooke kind of in a way and like i don't know to the extent that michelle and katie were marketing themselves as like my nine to five work week corporate job america whatever but i do know that brooke and honestly like this is in my opinion, from, like, what I can remember, how she really blew up, like, her YouTube channel she specifically. definitely became more consistent after graduating college. But to be fair, she also has a very successful podcast with um, Danielle Carolyn. So to act like she was only doing work week content is kind of, like, not entirely the case. Mm-hmm. But she did, like, I think that's when her YouTube specifically really blew up. Like, I know she posted on YouTube in college, but, like, I don't think it 
was like super big or anything but then she started posting like work week in her life like my nine to six or like nine to five job and like that's what really like got people to watch her because it was relatable content and so when she quit there was like a ton of backlash from her viewers being like you're not relatable anymore because like this is why we watched you so how are you going to like quit your job that is the reason that we watched you like that's what you made content Mm -hmm. about and so and that's not like unique to just brooke like it pretty much happens i think with every content creator or influencer who like comes out and says they quit their job we didn't even talk about clancy burke who like did the opposite of like having that corporate job and she like made her like her youtube channel is mostly about her being a news reporter and then she's like i'm quitting yeah she's which that there. one i think is honestly like more surprising than like any of these corporate like i keep saying like cog in the machine like type of jobs but, like you guys know what i'm talking about where it's like you go to the office in the cubicle do your like computer work and like that's it and you leave but like she had a unique career that she was like documenting and i feel like inspiring a lot of people with like dreams of becoming like news reporters or journalists or something and so i feel like that was an interesting move like yeah. obviously no judgment to her but i was like i would have been very scared to do that yeah i feel like based off of watching what i did of her video talking about quitting it seemed more like a not so much Lifestyle like i'm leaving change. tv news reporting because i hate it and like want to pursue social media full time it seemed like she was having just like kind of an existential crisis like herself just like with anxiety and kind of like a what am i doing with my life type of moment that mm-hmm. she just wanted the opportunity and is able to take it where she can have more freedom for the time being and see where it takes her so mm-hmm. and then like as far as i don't know what katie and michelle did but i'm guessing that they like potentially had similar fallout from their fans like who looked to their content as like a relate relatability thing for like it's fun to romanticize your life and so one way to do that is by watching people with similar lives to you and like they just romanticize their lives so then you can kind of be like oh yeah like my life looks kind of like that too but i don't have to like make it look like that Mm -hmm. at least that's what i like to do because i like i watch this content too for like relatability stuff like i like seeing students on like clinical rotations and like i do that too we are the same (laughs) have you seen this is a side note but if you guys are on tiktok and you ever see that medical student who's like a rager how does she do it how many ragers does she actually go to versus like does she use like the same just like clip. rage clip to just i don't be know like, i am medical student but also rager no i've seen like literally like a day in life where she's like so i get up and then i go work out and then i go or she'll be like i get up i go to my clinical rotation and then i leave and then i go study and then i go work out and then i go to a rave how long and right you, everyone is doing the next day? everyone comments really how long are your days because how are you doing this Anyway, highly recommend. I could not think of her uh, username for the life of me, but if you guys know, you know, and it's impressive. Okay, the last round of people, I guess, is people who are mostly known as being influencers, but then have taken a step back in one way, shape, or form to either, Sierra worded this as in a roundabout way, they've kind of created more of a nine-to-five job because their brand has kind of expanded beyond just themselves um and then uh, yeah we'll just talk about the individual people and explain their situation all right so one person very uh tiktok famous amongst the people kind of in our age demographic jenna palick so she was i guess she like worked for tiktok i feel like she didn't wasn't really ever huge for that though like to me i always just no. think of her as a social media I person just, i also think of her mostly as a social media person but i just like I didn't realize this until after the fact and then I kind of was like oh that was her there was someone who like posted their resume basically on TikTok asking TikTok for a job and it was her and I remember seeing that and I remember seeing her and I didn't put two and two together to think that was or to realize that that was her so then she worked at TikTok did well I think salary wise because she made a TikTok once saying that her base salary was like 40 or 50,000 but then like because it was a sales position and she made um commission she ended up making like ninety thousand probably so it's like that's a well-paying job in a field that she probably liked i guess enough one thing like i said we just talked about how like we see her as like a social media person but then we forgot like her whole brand was fun on weekdays it still is her brand but like 
there was a serious amount of backlash when she when she quit her nine to five then yeah because everyone was like the whole brand is fun on weekdays like you Which work was, nine to five right and then you have fun in the afternoon and now you're quitting your full-time job yeah. so how is it still fun on weekdays so that was like a big you know point of tension amongst her viewers yeah and then she kind of i remember there's a tiktok i don't it's so funny how i see so many tiktoks when i literally don't follow anyone on tiktok but just like their stuff will consistently pop up Mm -hmm. on my for you page as if i follow them which is fine that's kind of how i like it but i like it to just like let me know when like things are bright um she posted something saying i don't know if she still has an assistant or if she had an assistant at one time um but as she was like growing her brand she like brought on someone else and she kind of made a point to say like if my assistant were to mention like this is my job. This is what I'm doing all day, every day as my job. No one would blink an eye because she's not working for herself. But then she's the one who's working for herself. Mm-hmm. Still kind of doing that nine to five time. Obviously, as like the owner of any company or entrepreneur, like you have a little bit more freedom in your specific set hours. But she kind of was trying to reframe it. And people are, are and are not going to like understand um the where she's behind it from, yeah but she's kind of like i still am doing a job and then trying to like live my life after the fact um so yeah mm-hmm. anyways so she recently has been saying how just doing social media stuff full-time has not been fulfilling to her like at least on its own and so she just said that she wants to like start another job which it's not like a nine to five type of job no. she wants to be like a pilates instructor but it is definitely more of a traditional job like someone could say they're a pilates instructor and you're like okay like cool that's your job and yeah. so she has the idea of like she does her social media stuff that's her primary income but then we like talked about earlier fulfillment you don't some people do get fulfillment just from social media and like creating that content and then i'd say other people i would probably argue the majority probably just like don't get fully fulfilled from that and part of it could be because You're not going to, like, be solely fulfilled from, like, any one thing you do. Like, especially, like, when social media becomes your job, you start to, like, still develop, like, that kind of resentment towards it. Like, anyone who has a job, I feel like, has a little bit of, like, oh, it's my job. Like, I don't want to work. And so, when that even when that becomes your full-time thing and you, like, had so much fun doing it on the side, when it becomes the full thing, you're like, oh, like, this isn't, like, everything it was cracked up to be. Yeah. So, then you, like, look elsewhere for like that other source of fulfillment fulfillment so i'm interested interested to see how that plays out um before she kind of was like sound pilates instructor she kind of was like talking about this idea of just like trying a variety of things so i don't know if she's still planning on doing that or if she's kind of like set on like just doing this pilates thing for now and then seeing where that takes her but in a way like it is just kind of refreshing for me to because i feel like the more I like step away from social media and into more of like the career field you kind of want what you don't have mm-hmm. and so you kind of start to wonder like I'm about to put myself into like more of this full-time position come like January or shortly after and then I'm gonna miss out on having like that quote-unquote free time or whatever else to do other stuff as with. if we have been working 40 hours a week <laughs> I know um but then like seeing that and kind of it's a little nice to just see that I am recognizing like I've been on both sides. I know there's negatives and there's positives for both situations, no matter what. And you're probably not going to find like a perfect situation, Um, but you try your best. Mm -hmm. Um, So another like group of influencers that I thought of, I specifically follow Brooklyn and Bailey. And so like they're who popped into my mind, but they're by no means like the only creators that have opened up like their own business or brand or like shop or anything so they own a company called lash next door and it's like it was originally originally just mascara and now it's like this full online boutique and they have like a whole warehouse and office space for it they have employees and like that is basically like from observing their social media and their stories like that is their job like they go into work have their meetings like find they samples do the and video stuff. planning they set aside time to obviously record videos and stuff but like that's the nine to five but I honestly, like, I'm even saying, like, their YouTube and stuff, to me, seems like it's not even, like, their thing anymore. They still post, but, like, you can just tell the content they post is, like, it's not, like, I don't want to say that they don't care. But, like, it's always, like, oh, like, Brooklyn's bridal shower. Oh, it's, like, her asking her bridesmaids. Like, it's stuff that, like, I don't know how to describe it. Not, like, thought out, planned content like they yeah. used to have. Like, it's definitely, like, it, to me, seems like an afterthought. Like, they did a video where, like, oh, like, 
Asa graduated college. Like, no offense, but I feel like your viewers don't care. But and how so, many views does it get? I mean, probably got like hundreds of thousand views, but and like they like obviously like, launched a skincare brand, so like they did a video about like skincare. Like they did a video for Brooklyn, Brooklyn and Dakota's engagement photos, and it's like we didn't care. To, like I feel I like, like being mean. Too, but do you know what I'm saying? Like, They've, I get what you're saying because, like, I'm comparing it to what the content they used to make was, but I feel like at the same time, they, the previous content they were making was probably, like, that's probably just not popular anymore or not stuff they want to make anymore, so I feel like it's also a combination of them transitioning to more feasible video ideas and trying to, like, vlogging is popular, and so they kind of, like, yeah. they are just vlogs, but, like, the way they title and format it, no, it's kind of, like, a dressed-up bow of, like... That's what I, like, I don't know how to describe it, but, like, for some reason, despite the fact, like, they're pretty, like, open books on the internet, like, there's just, like, this level of, like, this wall that I get, like, put up vibes from their social media. Hopefully this makes sense to, like, literally anyone. But, like, it doesn't feel like when you and I grab a camera and are vlogging, like, it just doesn't feel the same as when I see us vlog or when I see other people vlog. And I don't know why. (laughs) No offense to anyone. If any of the, (laughs) if you guys are listening to this, I don't know what to tell you. It's just the vibe I get. Okay. We have two other people that will get some honorable mentions in the episode. So next is Natalie Barbu. Um, She is more, she's like also just kind of a lifestyle YouTuber. And I don't really know if there's any like specific way that she like increased her following. But I think she gained a following when she was an engineer, like doing vlogs. Okay. So she graduated from NC State with an engineering degree and then got a job as a consultant. She was also kind of doing the nine to five thing and making vlogs related to content around working full time. And then she also ended up leaving and pursuing social media full time. But I think also with the intention pretty shortly after that she wanted to be more like entrepreneurial and not just like doing social media herself. So she started a company called Rella and she's like one of multiple co-founders that like, you know, went through the whole like, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Pitching it to investors and getting people brought on to have capital to make this thing happen. And as far as I know, it's, you know, still up and running and I don't technically know like how well it's doing per se, but um that is what she focuses a lot of her time on now so yeah Mm -hmm. and then the last one is danny cimarelli so she was formerly a member of the cimarelli band acapella group of sisters that i feel like most of you probably have heard of they were very popular especially back in the day um she's the youngest cimarelli sister and she decided like a year ago maybe two to leave like the group band whatever you want to be fair like she never really, like, chose social media in the first place. It's just kind of something that was, like, put onto her because that was just, like, what they did growing up. And so I think that oftentimes when you see people who are in that at such a young age and not necessarily even with, like, under, under their choice, they're probably more likely to want to just, like, get out of that and be like, I just want to, like, be a little bit more normal. So... Um, yeah, she obviously still, like, she has a YouTube channel still. She posts, like, fairly regularly on that, but I know she has, like, at least from one of her TikToks I saw a couple months ago, she, like, talked about how she had, like, gotten, like, her first non-social media job, and it was, like, I think it was, like, working at a shelter or something, like, it's not, like, a traditional, like, corporate job or anything, but it was just, like, she was having something else to do. Making her money elsewhere. Um... So, yeah. Or then, like, someone else, too. I kind of get, like, the same vibe from, like, uh, Brooke Highland. But to be fair, like, I don't know if she has, like, a traditional job. But she kind of, you know, was in Dance Moms. Was, I don't want to say forced into doing that. But at a young age, like, that was her life. And she was, like, this internet personality or television personality. from doing that. Has a following. But then kind of went on to live, like, a fairly normal lifestyle of like graduating high school going to a normal college having like her college experience and then 
you know, she graduated and I don't fully know what she's doing, but I think she does like social media stuff, but like for a company. That's what I, that's what I thought. So I don't know which company, but I think that's what she does from, I don't really follow her either. So I don't fully know what she does, but I have seen her stuff pop up occasionally. So yeah. Anyways, what we've learned today is that either and any and all of these paths work and they work for different people depending on what their goals are. And ultimately, I think that people, like, if they do get involved in social media at all, I think they're going to, like, kind of just, like, run through the loops, like, trying to chase whatever is fulfilling to them at the time. And I think that's, like, why we see, like, the examples of, like, It's, like, a cyclical thing. Yeah. Like, they are working a job, they do social media, they quit their job, doing social social media, media, and then they get kind of burned out doing that, and then... Go back to a job, cycle starts over. So, Yeah. That's what we learned. I think people don't like things being stagnant and people like things to change up and be different. And so if you get stuck doing one thing over and over all the time, no matter what it is, you're probably going to get a little sick of it. And that's a good note to end on. <laughs> that's yeah. Um, I hope that you guys learned something through this episode. Maybe just like if you haven't thought about like this cyclical nature of like transitioning between careers in, in terms of nine to five versus social media. Maybe it just was like an interesting conversation for you to listen to and hopefully our perspective and insight into the topic from our own experiences gave you some context. Yeah. Um, you guys can always make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel according to podcast. It's um, also linked as a channel on Megan and Sierra. So if you want to figure out how to get there, go subscribe because our views are actually doing better than I was expecting mm-hmm. on YouTube. I wasn't fully sure what to expect. Uh, but our subscribers could go up to match a little bit. So yeah. that would be nice. <laughs> um, thanks to anyone who's still listening on Spotify too. Um, I haven't really determined if I have like, a preference or anything. Some of you guys have asked that of like, do you want me to watch the video? Do you want me to listen on Spotify? Whatever you want. We're posting both. So whatever you'd like to do. Um, that's all for this week. And we will talk to you guys next Thursday. Bye. Bye.